Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you saw by the title today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the five spiritual books that you need to be reading at least once a year. These are actually books that I try to read at least once a year. These are books that have actually changed my life drastically. And sometimes you kind of forget some of those very important spiritual principles that you've picked up from one book or another. And you just need to refresh yourself every year. And before you get into it, you know what to do. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs> okay, guys. So if you're interested, keep on watching. And thank you again for tuning in. This list actually has six books in it, but I just tried to package two books that are by the same author that I feel like if you've read one you need to read the other and some of these books you're probably going to be thinking well I've already read that these books are the type of books that you if you've only read it once honestly you haven't read it because some of these books I read the first time and I was like what are they talking about type of books okay so the first book i'm going to be talking about is the power of now i actually just bought a new copy because i gave one away to a friend and forgot to get it back kendra if you're watching this girl i hope this book has changed you're likely read this book about uh, in high school and when i first read it i was like ah yeah i don't know what he's talking about like i said these books will meet you at your level of consciousness i feel like the title is very self-explanatory and just the whole principle of this book is to just remind you that life was never not in this current moment this book has really helped me with just building a mastery of not just skills but principles and beliefs to help me stay in the moment the next book i'm going to talk about is a new earth i first read this actually as a pdf I'd be at work and I'd work and if I needed a break I'll just open up my PDF and start reading this book. I don't want to choose which baby I love the most but this book oh my god. So basically A New Earth is all about realizing that consciousness in the world um, in the universe either through human animal plant consciousness is constantly evolving specifically the human consciousness is evolving to, to the point where if you don't allow your consciousness to evolve it's just gonna die off. Previous book The Power of Now he tackled something called the pain body and the pain body is basically ego and if you know what ego is in its most basic form it's just the parts of you that are too attached to the physical world the parts of you that are too attached to your physical body the parts of you that are too attached to the future and past this book breaks down just how the ego or the pain body is holding back the rate at which the human consciousness is evolving i think uh, a lot of the things that are happening in the world this is just my perspective <laughs> this is not in the book whatsoever. I feel like a lot of things that are happening in the world right now are trying to tell us to slow down. So another thing that he talks about in this book that I found really, really interesting, he talks about a lot of things. I'm not going to tell you what the whole book is about. I'm just giving you just bits and pieces that I took away from. He talks about the fact that the imbalance between the feminine energies and the male energies have been the reason why our world is very chaotic and the evolving of the human consciousness is relying, like strongly relying on the feminine energies of the universe to be brought up and balanced with male energies and as we know we live in a very patriarchal society i don't know a country and maybe there is let me know if you know of a country that's more matriarchal than it is patriarchal and for us to evolve to the next level women are going to play a very important part in this my next book on the list is seat of the soul is by gary zukov i don't agree with some of the things that he says but i feel like this is a very important book to read the title is very self-explanatory seed of the soul talks a lot about the fact that in today's society the reason we struggle so much with connecting with our souls is the fact that we've let our soul not take the throne that it belongs in we've put it in the back burner and we've allowed our personalities and our egos and our pain bodies to take over us and that's literally the root of all chaos or destruction in your life or in the world i'm pretty sure you also wondered like why do we have egos why do we have personalities then if they're so detrimental to our lives but personalities, egos, they're not really detrimental. They only become detrimental when you give them the steering wheel. And the ego and the personality are the things that will tell you everything that you need to learn in this lifetime. The ego or the personality will point at all the things or all the parts of the soul that need to be healed or reconnected. So that's what he says. But I'm probably saying it wrong, which is fine because you are going to read the book. Okay, so the next book I'm going to be talking about, I don't actually have a physical copy with me because when I read it, 
I read it as a PDF called Celestine Prophecy and it's by James Redfield. I really enjoy reading this book because unlike the other books I've already talked about, this one is different because it takes all the principles that we were we learned through the other books that I've already talked about and put it in a story form. So this is that type of book. I would actually compare it to The Alchemist kind of kind of like that, you know? It's just a story of somebody um, going through a journey and all those spiritual practices are being woven into the story. We recommend it if you've read the other books and you're just looking for a book that is just a story, you know, something easy to read, something relatable that you can just um, see yourself in. Okay guys, so the next book I'm going to be talking about is this book right here. This is The Book of Awakening by Mark Napo. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I really love this book. I I am not going to compare this book to the Bible. It is not the Bible at all. But it's just that type of book that you can easily pick up every day and just read something fruitful and wholesome that just fills your soul or just gets you thinking about your life in a very different way. Each page is dedicated to each day of the year. So 365 days. So there is January 1st until the last day of the year. So each day you just read a page. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just read today's one. Today is April 22nd, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to read the whole page so you guys just get a feel of what this book is like okay so this is april 22nd as you can see there's the date there and it's not more than a page so it's this section here and this whole page i'm gonna just read a little section that i actually read today and i was like oh my gosh you're pulling at my heart and each section or each day has a title today's title is it is enough hmm you know sometimes i read some of these and i'm like oh my gosh you just knew exactly what I needed on this exact day. So let me read this insight for you guys. The presence of God has never eliminated pain, only made it more bearable. Now when things don't go the way I want, I try to kiss what waits beneath all want. Now when the car breaks down, then I get angry. I try to hear the weeds in the ditch as they point me to the sky. I find that to be so beautiful. Time, time again, we are asked to outlast what we want and hope for in order to see what is there. It is enough. Um, and most of the books that I'm recommending here, you can actually find the authors on the Super Soul Sunday podcast. Not all of them, but some of them. I do know Ika Tole has several podcasts um, on Super Soul Sunday podcast. So if you're interested in anything that he has to say, there's plenty of him on that podcast. And I'll be leaving all the links to those podcasts down below under each book. Um, so be on the lookout for that if you are interested. Next book, this is my very last book that I'm going to be talking about. And this is the the seven spiritual laws of success it's a very quick book to just give you a refresh of everything that you're learning in your spiritual journey just give you pointers and remind you of just little things that you can do every day so yeah this is a very easy book the seven spiritual laws of success i'm just number one is the law of pure potentiality the law of giving the law of karma the law of least effort which i need to read because like um i don't know i don't know in this book he talks about when you are truly aligned and you're doing everything not doing everything right but if you stay connected to your creator if you stay connected to your soul if you stay connected to your consciousness you don't even have to do too much to achieve your greatest dreams and it's so weird because like we live in a world that is telling us that we have to work super 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 hard and honestly he does say there's nothing wrong with working super super hard you can do that but you don't have to. You really don't have to if you have God right next to you. Yeah, you're gonna have to do some work, but it's not gonna feel too raining and strenuous. And it's also not gonna feel like when you get to the destination of that goal, it's not gonna feel like, what now? It's 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 just gonna be so fulfilling. You're not gonna get there and be so empty and wonder why was I doing all of this for? Well, the other three are the law of intention and desire, the law of detachment, very important, and the law of dharma or purpose in life. You really have to invest in your spiritual life if you really have to dedicate time every day reading is just one way i've dedicated myself to this journey for you it could be podcasts so if you guys want recommendations of podcasts let me know i will do recommendations on that thing that does that for me is makeup surprisingly something as superficial as makeup and the reason why makeup does it for me is because it's sort of like meditating right and as you guys know the greatest prayer one of the greatest prayers is creating when you're creating you are praying to god you are kind of imitating what he did when he was creating you so in the process it is you are praying to him for giving you a piece of himself so yeah guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video i just wanted to put out 
something wholesome. I know things are very hectic right now um, and I think it's a perfect time to just reconnect yourself and reinvest in your spirituality, reinvest in your relationship with God, however you want to have it. If it's through books, this was probably the perfect video for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys next time.